adjourned. Close the door. Thank you, you sir. All right, we'll call the Ways and Means meeting to order. Uh, Sharita, please take the roll. Alderwoman Davis. Alderman Vaquero. Present. Alderwoman Hubbard. Howard. Howard. I'm sorry, Alderwoman Howard. Present. Alderwoman Hubbard. Alderwoman Murphy. Here. Alderwoman Spencer. Alderman Muhammad. Alderman Alderberg. Alderman Boyd. I knew he was here. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Here. Chairman Vaughn. Present. Thank you very much, Sharia. Uh, we'll hold off and excuse Alderman until the end of the meeting. We'll move for approval of meeting, uh, minutes from the meeting on October 24th. I entertain a motion. I move that we uh, second it. I have a second. Sharia, please hold on. Alderman Davis. Alderman Vaquero. Aye. Alderman Howard. Aye. Alderman Hubbard. Aye. Alderman Murphy. Aye. Alderman Spencer. Alderman Muhammad. Aye. Alderman Oldenburg. Alderman Boyd. Alderman Clark Hubbard. Here. I'm sorry. Aye. Chairman Vaughn. Aye. Seven aisles. All right. Thank you very much. We will. Uh, we have a shorter agenda. If you folks had the one online, we had a couple of bills that had to be held. So we only have two items today. We'll start with uh, Board Bill 36. Alderman Navarro, you're free to take the hot seat. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Do you have anyone here to be speaking with you? Uh, well, I have a few folks who are available for questions. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Um, but could you pass me in a the packet so I've got sure. in front of me? Thank you. And so Board Bill 36 um, involves the sale of a piece of property that's currently held by the Comptroller's Office to a um, neighbor developer. And I'm sure the, the first question, well, so first of all, this piece of property, it's on the corner of Westminster and De Pere in the Skinker to Bolivar neighborhood. It's just south of Del Mar, just east of Skinker. Um, it's an interesting sized parcel. It used to have a gas station on it. And so that's part of the reason we're here today. And I'm sure one of the first things in looking over this board bill, um, a lot of you have questions. You know, this is a lot in the central corridor that we're selling for $1,000. And why would we do that? And that is because it is contaminated with petrochemicals left over from the gas station um, that were there. So it's um, a very expensive lot to, to clean up. And luckily, we have a neighbor um, from, from the Skinker Developer neighborhood who's lived there since 1967. Yeah. Correct? Yes. Um, so Mr. Dan Sesh, who is here with us today, and has lived in the neighborhood um, and has seen this lot as an opportunity to provide um, an, another source of housing in the neighborhood. So there are a lot of people in this neighborhood. It's a, it's a diverse neighborhood in just about every way that you can imagine. And there's a lot of single family homes, a lot of larger single family homes, and then we've got a lot of multifamily apartment buildings. Um, it's, it's a diverse neighborhood in terms of race, socioeconomic status. We've got students, we've got empty nesters. And one of the things that Mr. Sesh has identified is that if you lived in this neighborhood and maybe you lived in a single family home for a long time, um, and you want to stay in the neighborhood, there aren't a lot of a lot of options outside of maybe like downsizing to a walk-up apartment or something. And so he's proposing to do a three-unit universal design building on this lot, um, and he plans to reside in one of those. And I can think of no better motivation for a developer to clean up a lot sufficiently than that they plan to live on it themselves. So he has been engaged with the Department of Natural Resources for years. In 2014, the neighborhood started talking about this lot and whether they um, were interested in seeing Mr. Sesh develop it. Um, there's been a lot of robust community engagement, especially in the last um, seven months or so. And I do have Brandon Sterling, who's the executive director of the Skinker de Bolivar Community Council. He's here, too, to answer any questions. And Mr. Sesh and the Community Council have entered into a, a memorandum of understanding about what steps he's going to take to make sure that the lot is cleaned up sufficiently. And I do have a copy of that with me today, if that, if that is helpful. Um, the lot has been appraised around $40,000. Um, but the remediation, the um, engineering study that's been done, which I have copies of, um, has said that it'd be around, I believe it's about $73,000 to get it cleaned up. So this is a lot that the city, um, you know, is not in any position to clean up anytime soon, but we have a, a resident uh, neighbor developer who's willing to come in, purchase this lot, and then pay for all of the cleanup, and then develop it with 
new housing, providing an opportunity that's not otherwise available in the neighborhood um, right now. So I'm, I'm happy to, um, I also have um, Kelly Anderson from the Comptroller's Office is here as well. Um, so happy to entertain any questions from the committee. All right, so this bill is only in regard to the sale. All the other things you're talking about are, are away from this. Right, okay, right. Okay, so I, and will there be a development bill for this project in the, in the future? I, I don't anticipate, yeah, okay. in terms of like a redevelopment plan yeah, or something, yeah. no. Okay, all right. All right, with that, I'll open up the questions. Alderman Carl. No questions. All right, Alderman Howard. No questions. Alderman Hubbard, to meet you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I have a few brief questions. So, and maybe somebody on the committee or you can answer it. Is this the normal process um, for a seller property or is, I've, I haven't seen this process happen before where we um, do a board bill to sell a piece of property. I, Who I, currently owns the property? The city? The comptroller's mm -hmm. office. Yeah, so the it, city and. It is because I've done this uh, about 15 years ago. I sold it. Uh, in fact, it was a gas station yeah, uh, and the neighborhood association too. purchased it actually for a dollar. Okay. But because it was in much worse shape than this one, and not in a desirable location. But yes, it does have to go through with the board bill. Okay, because it's owned by the, the council. Yes. Okay. And um, you said the appraised value was forty thousand. It's forty thousand. I can. Um, forty one thousand five hundred. Forty one thousand five hundred. And so um, the cost of cleaning up that money is going to be derived from where and how is that going to be? Here, I, ha I do have copies of the engineering study. Um, I'm happy to, or Dan, do you have copies of this? I have an extra copy. Yeah. And, it, and it lays out um, the estimated cost for, there's a GPR survey, tank removal and disposal, oversight and disposal of contaminated soil. I believe, um, I believe her question is, how, is he paying for that personally? Yeah, or is it a grant or something? Uh, or? He would be paying for it personally. Okay. okay. And um, this will be a three-unit building, and he'll reside in one of the units? Yes. So you'll rent the other units out, I'm guessing? No, they're condos. You'll sell them? I will sell the other two. Okay, and what's the square footage on, what will be the square footage on Do those Do you want units? me to have Mr. Yeah, 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 I'm sorry. Exactly. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're gonna, and you'll have to take the hot seat. And yeah, you're you're being recorded. Right There's an extra hot <laughs> seat, yes, I that's say. Right. Yeah. You're, you're on TV, so uh, for the record, you have to announce your name. <laughs> My name is Daniel Sesh, and uh, I guess the one I had thing, I was a longtime landlord. I uh, was a rental property for about 43 years. So. Um, so yeah, the square footage. The square footage is about 2,100 square feet, according to the conceptual design. Now there was some comment from some people that these are not necessarily going to be affordable. I might be able to split the first floor to 2,000 square foot lots, uh, units, which would be you know about half the price of the others. And what do you anticipate selling those units for? At this point in time, uh, in the upper 400s, okay. I'm cleaning up the lot. The building will have an elevator. I'll be putting in a sprinkler system. And so there are certain things that go way beyond what when we might build a, a new house. If I could just you have to we'll have to come up and uh, do your, your name. I'm Brandon Sterling. I'm the executive director of the Skinkin of Oliver Community Council. So we're the local CDC. So um, in reference specifically to that, the issue of affordability, he has talked about taking one of the units and breaking it up so that they could be more affordable. I think it's also worth noting that um, I think maybe in February or March, we sent out a survey to the neighborhood that he used to gauge interest in the units, and he held a focus group. We gave him office space to hold a focus group. And there's already several interested parties in the unit. So um, it's, it's not an option for everybody, but it is an option, right? Okay. And it's also worth noting that when we were in our planning process back in 2014, we probably only have two other sites in the neighborhood that will be conducive to a universal design building mm -hmm. targeting older adults. Mm -hmm. So we're very interested in what Mr. Sessions proposed. Okay. Hey, Thank you. Uh, I still have a few comments. Uh, seems like a, a great uh, development plan you have here, but I, I just wish that um, if there are any properties owned by the Comptroller's Office in my world, exactly. that they're going to sell for thousand dollars and let someone make upwards of over a million dollars. I'm I, I'm open to that too. If anybody here listening, um, and one other thing, and so you spoke of an MOU. You have an MOU with yes. with whom again? With, with the CDC. Okay. And so Naval has a copy of that that she can distribute. Um, 
the the MOU describes uh, the steps toward mediation. Could you hand me that, yeah, you, that yeah, top right, right there? So I'll briefly go through some of them. So the first is that he hire a, uh, a competent uh, remediation specialist. Uh, he spent quite a bit of time with, with DNR. I've had four conversations with DNR, and they're confident that they've got him a short list of, of specialists that can do this work. The goal is to get a no further action letter, which is really kind of the gold standard for, for cleanups. Um, in addition to that, there's some provisions for the neighborhood. Uh, one is that if for some reason uh, he starts the process of remediation and it turns out it's going to cost more than $70,000, we, we have a small adage. If you start to dig a hole, you finish a hole, you clean the hole, regardless of what it costs. Mm -hmm. If for some reason he finishes remediation and that busts his budget and he can't build anything, he deed the, the property over to us or our housing corporation. Okay. If for some reason in the beginning he determines, hey, this is really going to cost a lot and he hasn't started remediation, he doesn't have any obligation to start if he hasn't begun or any obligation to deed us land, right? Okay. Uh, and there's, there's several other you okay. know, pieces okay. in there. And what's the anticipated timeline for completion? If with luck I get all ducks in a row, hopefully could break ground in April or May. Uh, but and you know, I'm understanding that might be about a year after that. Oh, okay. But, you know, I would certainly want to have a shell up by the time of next winter. Okay. I, I do want to clarify one thing. <clears throat> I'm going to build a budget for pricing of giving myself a 10% profit, at best. Mm. If I'm lucky, I'll just break even. Mm. I don't want to sell at a loss. So that number really reflects the cost of this construction and the remediation. And Thank it's, you. It's actually very similar to another property that was owned by the city that was sold to another resident, I believe that was last year, year before last, at yeah. Pair and Pershing. And three individual single family homes were built on that property, but mm -hmm. the margin was of profit was small. It was really about getting their retirement home and building mm -hmm. some additionals mm -hmm. for, for other folks. So it's, it's And they all apples. sold in the upper 400s, which yes. was a bit of a surprise to me, but it was, I was glad to see that. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Thank you. Alwyn Murphy. Uh, no questions. She asked and okay. asked and answered. <laughs> Alwyn Muhammad. Uh, no questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank right. you. Thank you, sir. And other other one, Hubbard. <laughs> No, I don't have any questions. I've been in all the meetings. And all right. Before I proceed with any, uh, Alderman Vicaro had one or two. Just a, just a follow-up. Just curious. So I know you have to pay to remove the tanks. That, but on the remediation, <clears throat> after the first $10,000, doesn't the Superfund pick up the rest of that? Like, aren't you limited to just $10,000? Uh, no reason I know that, too. So Sure. No, the, in the discussion that I've had is... At, Accessing, uh, there was a, a fund set up by the state uh, 20 years ago where they would reimburse for tank removal. But apparently the steps to get that money are just so complicated that in speaking to DNR, it's just like the heck with it. It, it just, it would maybe delay surprise, the whole project surprise. a couple of years and it's just not worth it. Superfund, I think, is a very specific federal designation. Well, it's, it, it, it's, as long as I know, it's because we had a station and we tore it down. Sure. And we had to pay for the tank removal, yeah. but we were only limited to $10,000. And then the Department of Natural Resources took over, and they're the ones that are going to deem whether that ground is clean or not. Right, right. So they would dig so much, and they would tell us to keep digging or not. And they need to speak to you and find out who your contact is at DNR. <laughs> well, because, because it's set up for that. I mean, yeah. you're limited. They want clean sites. Yeah. And I know in the city they don't have to be as clean because we don't have well water. Sure. So, but as far as I knew, unless, you know, I think you're limited to that 10000 on. on I, I can just say, I think you're talking about PISTIF, the Petroleum Storage Tank Insurance Fund, yes. which is what DNR has. And right. I, this site is not being managed through through that. You have, yeah, as, as Mr. Sesh yeah. said, there's a whole application process to get DNR to adopt that as a site, and then a whole, a whole process. It's probably worth it. All right. But yes, and, and that's what we do. Anyway, I was just... 
Okay. I'm, curious. I'm, I'm fine with it. I don't care. Thank you, Oliver. Now, you, so you've done phase one, phase two, as far as yes. Yes. Right, everything, and, and that's where they came up with the pricing yes. and all those right. things. All right. With that, I uh, will allow Alderman and Navarro to close, unless anyone has any further comments from your committee. No. All right. Thank you. I, I think this is a, a great project for the neighborhood, and I just ask for your support. Okay, with that, uh, entertain a motion to... Uh, Let's all make the motion. We pass Board Bill 36 out with a due pass recommendation. Okay. Second. 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 Previous roll. Hearing no object in previous roll, we have passed Board Bill 36 out with a due Good pass time. recommendation. Thank you very much, everyone who came down to uh, help with this. <laughs> Thank you. We will now let Alderman Gracia come up with Board Bill yeah. 150. Hold on, we'll wait for Sheree to return to lock her up. <laughs> All right. Okay, with that, uh, all of you, please proceed. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. Uh, Board Bill 150 will create a community improvement district um, loosely around the boundaries of the old Praxair site in Lafayette Square. It's about 13 acres. Um, you may remember last session we passed a tax abatement um, for this area. It's a very challenging site with respect to topography, um, needs a lot of remediation, um, has no um, real infrastructure in terms of streets, lighting, alleys, sewers, all that, that sort of thing. And so the, this SID um, is going to recapture the money that's being taken out of the abatement for those, um, for those things that they, they will be paying for infrastructure-wise within the this, this site. And I have um, a representative from the owners group here as well as um, their attorneys, and I'm happy to take questions or have those okay. folks available for questions. Right, thank you very much. So this is the wonderful Bombs Away site. Yes. We have made this national. That's what I yes. All right. We'll start with uh, Alderman Picaro. Do you have any questions at this point? No, but isn't there somebody getting ready to put the whole group of homes on that site? Uh, there's been approval for the first phase. Yeah, this is a multi-phase project, and um, I believe the Preservation Board just um, oh, no. ruled. Mm -hmm. That's what I, I thought somebody was getting ready to buy all that and build all that. I'm, I'm part of the site, <coughs> correct? Yes. Okay, no, I didn't really have any question. I just thought it was time to do the same thing. Okay. All over Howard. Um, what, what is planned to go in this? In the entire site? Mm -hmm. um, I have a handout um, if you want to take a look at it. It's residential, commercial. Will this be developed businesses. by Hamilton? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's he's one of the owners in the group, right? But they are um, working with other developers to do the whole project. Oh, good. So it'll be residential. Mm -hmm. It's mixed use, so there's yeah room for uh, small businesses, commercial, residential. No farm. No farm. No farm. <laughs> I thought being facetious. Oh. <laughs> I just I'm just saying. I, She's being. Right. There are definitely yeah. Uh, keep that that green elements to it. Thank you. Okay, that's all I have. Yeah, that's that's green. See, that's all I have. Okay, Thank we you. have color pictures for everyone now. Oh, yeah. Everybody loves pictures. We do. Pictures, <laughs> All right. No further questions. Oh, Thank you. Right. I'll send that. Can you send that one to me? That's yeah. my old one. I don't know if this looks Alderman like this Hubbard, one's been updated. Do you have any questions? Oh, I'll take this one. Yeah. This is at Jefferson and Shoto? Correct. Uh, okay, where the big explosion was? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's it's that site plus some additional parcels. Okay. Is the DMV included in this footprint? You know, there's like a, you know, in that same section, there's a D Department of Motor Vehicle, there's like a DFS building or something. Is that further down? Uh, I'm not. That's yeah. Compton and Oh, Compton and Shoto. Oh, okay, okay. This is, this is the other way. Okay, this okay. I was kind of turned around. I didn't know there was a DMV there. That's yeah, helpful is. information. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I live right there. Okay. <laughs> for me, anyway, thank uh, No other questions. Okay. All right. Oh, Murphy, any questions? I uh, no, no questions. And there is, uh, there is green stuff on the building. Uh -huh. so on the roof. So it, it does look. Uh, 
Very good. And Very they're building, yeah, to lead specifications. So the, the, the residential is going to be apartment buildings and, and things and like that. And there are also uh, single family homes and townhomes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. um, they, I get you over here. Yeah, they've agreed to do um, workforce housing as well so that there's some affordable ho housing elements to this and then also addressing a need for the neighborhood. There's a lot of people who um, moved into the neighborhood a while ago and mm -hmm. rehabbed homes and are downsizing now but want to stay in the neighborhood. So making sure that there is housing available for them as well. Excellent. Very good. No more questions. All right. Thank Excellent. you very much. Alderman Muhammad has left the room, so I'll take that for no questions. <laughs> Alderman Hubbard, number two. No questions. All right. Okay, so this sit is to let the developer recoup his cost on streets, sores, all infrastructure that's right. not existing. Okay. And I guess it's easy to do because right now there's no one to sign for it but the developers. There are the <laughs> well, and the SID will have um, two representatives from okay. the Lafayette Square neighborhood All sitting right. on it. Okay. okay. Very good. Okay. Well, there's no further questions. We'll entertain a motion to uh, pass out okay. Board Bill 150 with a due pass recommendation. So I'll make the motion that we pass Board Bill 150 out with a due pass recommendation. Second. Second. Previous okay. roll. Hearing no objection, previous roll. We have passed out Board Bill 150 with due pass. That's good. With, Thank uh, you. With that, we will excuse uh, Alderman Davis. Alderman Spencer, Alderman Oldenburg, and Alderman mm -hmm. Pam Boyd for a necessary absence. Nice. I'll make a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to adjourn.